Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. So uh, we did it. Uh, Elo now officially has a self host compiler. Let me show you how we build it. Um, so as you can see here, this is the bootstrap compiler and we compile our self hosted compiler right here. And then we use the self hosted compiler to compile itself. And that will be the final compiler we uh, we actually use for the tests. Yeah, it's working. But as you can see, it's uh, incredibly slow. We have to fix that. But first, uh, what did I do since uh, the last video? Well, after a couple of days of troubleshooting, uh, I found a bug in the free function, which uh, frees dynamically allocated memory. And I then decided to refactor this function, mainly because the code was quite unreadable. Uh, so I split it up in smaller functions and this uh, actually fixed the bug. That was nice because uh, I just had to update a couple of tests, then it compiled itself. I then noticed that the code generator uh, was way too slow. As you can see here, it's uh, over a minute it takes to, well, it's actually compiling twice, but the first one is uh, quite fast, a couple of seconds. So it's over a minute and that Initially, initially was because of the code generator. Uh, it uses a lot of uh, mallux and freeze when it concatenates uh, strings. So what I saw is that our implementation of malloc uses the first fit algorithm. But when we look at the bin packing problem Wikipedia page, let's look at that. So somewhere around here, yeah. This shows us the time complexity of first fit. So that's uh, L log of L, or the mag magnitude. And you see that the next fit is O of L. So that's, uh, well, that's better. So uh, I changed it to uh, next fit. So that slightly improved the compilation time, but it, yeah, it's still not great. The more you use it, the slower it gets. And uh, we want to get rid of the O of L and have something even faster than that. We were concatenating strings by allocating a chunk of memory, which was big enough for the buffer and the appended string, and then copying both the buffer and the string to this memory. So the buffer was copied over and over every time a string was appended to it. So that's really bad, obviously. So what we do now is I made a so-called text buffer. Let me show you here. And this is a buffer that's, um, it allocates more than enough memory up front. And then you just have to copy over the, the appended string. The buffer, you don't have to touch it once it's there. Um, it's still dy dynamic. You can compare it to our implementation of the list. So whenever the buffer is not big enough, it creates a new buffer of twice its size. So worst case, it's O of N, but because you begin with a big enough size, it's more like O of 1 to append to the buffer. So this made things uh, a lot better. So the code generator doesn't uh, malloc and free uh, anymore within the loop. I think that's quite optimized. Now it's time to optimize the parser. I want to base my uh, choices now on uh, real st statistics uh, and I have no insight in which functions take the most time. So what I'd like to do for the next video is build a profiler. So the prof profiler will be a small program that samples the call stack every millisecond to see which uh, function calls take the most time. And uh, this will give us a good idea of how we should optimize the, uh, the compiler. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, once it's, uh, it's fast it's fast enough, we can get rid of the Python uh, bootstrap compiler that will save us a dependency. And we'll then uh, bootstrap our compiler using the assembly files. Um, and after that, I'm thinking about writing a game engine in ELO. I think that would be cool. And uh, maybe use this game engine for certain uh, game jams. But that's all for uh, later videos. So uh, for now, uh, I hope you found this interesting. I'm really glad it's uh, self-compiling now. So yeah, thanks for watching and uh, hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>